Holy Sight. I just need to uh, just read out some uh, procedures for the meeting. Uh, as you know, this is a, a meeting that's open to the public, but it's not actually a public meeting. Uh, there's no fire alarm test expected, but if the fire alarm does go off, please make sure you follow up all the officers in the white shirt. There's no smoke up the Anybody who wishes to use the toilet are located in the corridor uh, as well as the doors which turn left and on the right. Um, any member leaving the meeting should, for, for any reason, be required to uh, switch up any of the equipment. And obviously, with the lots of meeting starts, turn off their mobile phones. Uh, privacy and confidentiality. Request anybody present <coughs> who has any items of personal, private, or confidential or exempt information to ensure that the items are not displayed until such time as they may be required. Okay. And recordings, if all, all present at the proceedings of the meeting may be recorded. <coughs> and if any observers have any objections <coughs> to being recorded, they are offered the opportunity to leave the meeting if they so wish. And make sure that all mobile phones are switched off. So I right, counsel on that in this meeting now declare this meeting open and recordings may now commence. Okay, just before we start the meeting uh, agenda in full, uh, we have a presentation to uh, former members. Uh, there's Tony Robinson, Robinson sorry, um, who's no longer uh, didn't get re the in the last election, who's left the authority, so we've got a gift for, for Tony. Uh, so there's, uh, sorry, who's going to ask well, I could do, yes. Yeah. Also, oh, okay. okay. uh, And also, John Kelly at Les is going to pass on to John. Yes. And we have Ted, Ted Taxi, Ted, <coughs> this afternoon um, to receive his, his gift on behalf of the authority. And just to say a few words on behalf of uh, Ted, Ted. Probably being the longest serving member of the authority, 20, yeah. 20 years, which is you know, it's a, it's a long time in, in anybody's <coughs> mind. And the work that he's put in over that time has, has been absolutely magnificent. He's been a great advocate for, for the service going back <coughs> many, many years, even involved with the, the emergency plan uh, as it was then. Um, some of the work that he got involved with, starting off with our community fire safety checks. Um, with that initiative, uh, taking the lead on that, um, you know, been through some difficult times over the years, but you know, Ted's been uh, a stalwart in making sure that the fire and rescue service delivers the, the, the service that the public expect and the professionalism that they expect. And he's been a great advocate within the political circles of promoting the work of the fire and rescue service. So thank you, Ted, for, for everything that you've done. It's uh, sad to see you go. Uh, because you, you've been a great supporter of mine as well, which is good, and obviously great uh, players within the, the Labour group. Um, and you know, just on behalf of the, the authority, I'd like to present you with this little bit, <coughs> which I hope that you'll take home and put in quite a place. It's uh, something from the Firefighters Charity as well, which is it's a, a, a lovely token of, uh, of uh, appreciation. Ten. say is going back to Hatton Garden <coughs> by the road. I've seen four gym, I've seen four sheep offices, and also I've done four committees as well. It's a coincidence. <laughs> but I've got to say this now that the one that gave me most satisfaction <coughs> was an agency plan. Because I think it's less you know what I've done about on this. In, when we were in Hatton Garden, Malcolm Saunders came to me. He said, you've got delegated powers, Ted. And I said, all right, Malcolm, what's the problem? He said, I want some funding off you. I said, what do you want it for? He said, smoke alarms. I said, smoke alarms? I hope you give him out three. He said, oh, yes. I said, well, you've got my support. 
The rest is history. Yeah. The rest is history. Smoke alarms, home fire safety checks, we've moved on. We're possibly the best fire service in the car, and we, we all know that. We have been treated right, and by both governments as well, not just one, by both governments. We're really treated right for being the best fire authority in the country. And I must say, the members I've worked with from all parties, Leslie knows that, all parties have all worked together. The harm has been brilliant. I only wish the fire authorities all worked like the fire yeah. Yeah. It's a brilliant authority, and I know you're in good hands with the chair, and De De Dan and Phil, you're in good hands. Janice, I want to thank you for your help. Kelly, I want to thank Kelly for her help. Dan, I want to thank you for your help, Dan. Is Kate in here? Ah, God. Well, who's in here? Honestly, God, I wish the best luck for Kate, because our loss is somebody else's gain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you all. Because oh, it, thank you. It's been a pleasure being with you. On item 7, all members have been provided their own copy of the Constitution. Uh, appendix, uh, appendix 2, agenda item 7, is to be considered today. And if approved, members are requested to keep their copies of the Constitution for future reference. Item 1, 2, 3. No, sorry, that's, not, that's just, just, that's just all right. Yeah. We haven't answered them. Okay. okay, so any apologies? <coughs> Uh, Mike Cairns, uh, uh, it's not today, really so apologies from Mike Cairns. Um, Jimmy's not here, is he? No, he sent apologies. Jimmy sent apologies. Yes. Any other apologies? And Barbara Murray. And Barbara Murray. Okay, any other apologies? Okay. Uh, any declarations of interest or uh, any items on uh, the agenda of members or officers? No. There's no additional items of business to be determined as a matter of agency and there's no items to exclude the press and public. Okay, item two is the minutes from the previous meeting, if they agree. 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 Item three is the election of chair. Can I have nominations please? No, I'll second. Okay. Any other nominations? If they agree. Thank you very much for that. Item four is the election of Vice Chairman, can I move Councillors Les Byron and Councillors Linda Maloney? Second. Second. Any other nominations? Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item five is the membership of the authority. Uh, is that agreed? Agreed. agreed. So. Yeah. Item six is the structure of the authority for the coming year. 
pages 15 to 30. <coughs> is that agreed? Please. Item 7 is the Constitution for the Authority. Yeah, <coughs> um, Member, just to draw your attention to the fact that um, one subcommittee consultation and negotiation has been removed from the, the authority's structure. Um, the reasons for that is, uh, are quite clear because industrial relations um, there has been significant improvement over the period of time that that, that subcommittee has been operating. Um, and it's felt that this is the stage now where reports can come on a quarterly basis to the full authority on the industrial relations issues. Um, the, the other issues are, are concerned with the two new member ambassador roles um, for health and wellbeing and for um, youth engagement. Um, these are seen as two quite important issues going forward, uh, both for councils and for um, the fire authority. Um, the only other changes to the Constitution are in terms of the regulations that you know about, in terms of uh, recording of meetings um, and uh, delegations. Uh, so those have been incorporated into all the procedure rules. And um, that's about it. And I would like to uh, draw your attention to paragraph 10.1, um, where we've talked about the officer and member relations protocol. Um, that's been very recently <coughs> reviewed by the Member Development Group at their request. Um, and um, I would suggest that <coughs> members and officers take the opportunity whenever they can to, to read the provisions in that. Um, if there are any questions, yeah. Thank you. Any questions for colleagues and members? Has anybody had a copy of uh, the Labour Group's membership for the committees and the nominated chairpersons? Mm -hmm. no, uh, but just, just to go through, just for the community safety and protection, the chair will be Councillor Linda Malone, and for policy and resources, the chair will be Councillor Ed Byron, and the subcommittee will be Councillor Denise Roberts, performance and scrutiny will be Councillor Robbie Ayres, the appointments committee will be Councillor Hamratty, the appeals committee will be Councillor Hamratty, and the Nabla Development Group will be Councillor Jimmy Mark. And the appointment for all lead members, uh, that list will be circulated as well because the position we might need lead members so we'll to to go continue in that role. Yeah. And also the, uh, the ambassador role for the health and wellbeing will be Councillor Roy Blacken. And the ambassador role for youth engagement will be Councillor Peter Bell. Okay. And Chair, just, just for information, I mean, so Welsh and I have gone to the committees which were entitled to have a seat on as well, so we will uh, supply those to the at the end of the meeting. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, So item eight is the authority dates for fifteen and sixteen and the draft date for sixteen and seventeen. Uh, that's our <coughs> station visits which is scheduled for the 15th of October will now take place on the 13th of October, which will be the Tuesday. And also you will have received an email yesterday uh, just highlighting the special meeting that uh, I've called for the 14th of July and that coincides with the strategy date that we have here in England to go through certain aspects of the um, The other thing is that with the, the learning lunches that we usually have, 
Item 11 is the questions on the discharge of functions to the district councils. Just one change on this one. Uh, obviously, Councillor Tony knew when I'd be replaced by Councillor Nate Calvin, and obviously, we will be um, able to discharge any questions in response to any questions from the Council of Okay. Item 12 is the appointment of policy members to outside organisations. That's from page 71 to 74. for the Local Government Association will stay the same. That's Councillors Tom Ratty and Tom Maloney. Nominations to the North West Employers Organisation um, will submit a name uh, at the next meeting. Um, the National Joint Council, again it's Councillor Tom Ratty. The North West Fire and Rescue Forum, it's Councillors Maloney, Tom Ratty, um, Councillor Byron as an observer and Councillor Ben. The fire support <coughs> network is Councillor Jane Jean Stapleton. Toxic Fire Fit Hub is Councillor Jean Stapleton. The Association of Metropolitan Fire Rescue Authorities is Councillor Hanbati and Councillor Manoni. Uh, the local authorities confront disaster and emergencies. Um, we, we don't attend this, we, we, we organisation, you know, we're not really engaged with it. So. I'll suggest that we delete this one from the uh, my list. Okay? And we'll save ourselves uh, five hundred dollars. It's a bit safe. And the Merseyside Brussels office, which will be council in uh, Maloney, and the Liverpool City Region Lead. Um, without contribution, it will be an officer of that. Are they agreed? Yeah. Yeah. Chair, sorry, just before I sorry, just before you move on, on item A when you talk about the fire support network, it does actually mention that I'm appointed. 
that's incorrect because I'm not appointed from the fire authority. I'm appointed as private invitation and that was just actually just incorrect because it's listed there. Okay. So item thirteen is the approved conferences and outside meetings. <laughs> on page 77, there's a, a list there of various meetings. Uh, in looking at it, it's been like this for years. In looking at it, seven of them, the coordinating committee doesn't exist anymore, Brussels office, you never go. Uh, the, the, uh, you get the drift. The proposal <coughs> is that we delete the list and change it to um, attendance at conferences and meetings as approved by the chairman. Because we're trying to drive the cost down on this anyway. Yeah. Okay, item 14 is a meeting of national politicians and party political conferences. Is that great? Okay. Item 15 is the update of the report, please. Say the description. Chair, first, I'll just introduce this report. Uh, the purpose of the report is to request that members note the changes to the service instruction pertaining to parental leave, which have been altered to reflect amendments to the regulations in relation to the sharing of maternity and paternity leave uh, moving forward, and the recommendation that members approve the amendments within the service instructions as per appendices A through to D. Uh, it's probably no, no more detail required, Chair, other than that, other than to say that the government uh, published the Shared Parental Leave Regulations in 2014, which enables parents to share maternity or adoption leave between themselves in order to enable both parents benefit from the time off with their new child up to uh, 50 weeks shared, 52 weeks in total, two weeks of which uh, the, the mother has to spend with the, the child initially. Uh, the, the regulations also offer rights to parents <coughs> to be born through surrogacy arrangements and these new rights have been incorporated into the service instructions. So those amendments have been uh, made and they are contained within appendices A through to D and I'm happy to take any further questions if there are any, Chair. Any questions or comments on that? Very well. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Okay, thank you. Item 16 is the Martin Abbey Outcomes. Yeah, just before we start. The purpose of this report, members, is to advise <coughs> on the outcomes of a management review which was undertaken at the authority budget meeting <coughs> on the 26th of February in accordance with your budget resolution which is attached at Appendix A to your report on pages 127 through 136. And if I can, members, can we'll draw your attention, please, to... Paragraph 17, which is on page 128, which is the, up to the bottom of 128, moving up to 129. Uh, the authority is also committed to reviewing its overall management structures to identify efficiencies, and on an ongoing basis, it expects the Chief File Officer to consider the managerial structure and capacity required to manage the service at a time of such significant change. Uh, secondly, members, the report is to seek approval for the designation of the existing Deputy Treasurer, which is Ian, who's just left the meeting, and this is the reason why, into the role of Treasurer, which is a position that the authority is required to have under Section 151 of the <coughs> Local Government Act. In terms of the management review, there were two objectives. The, the first objective, as you would expect, <coughs> is to deliver savings in anticipation of the, uh, the cuts to our budget, which uh, we will get sight of the, the quantum, if you like, on the 8th, of, uh, the 8th of July, and then some of the detail in the, uh, the autumn statement. But it's fair to say uh, our predictions in year cuts for next year are in the order of around 14%, which would dwarf anything that we've had to face up to this point. So. 
I don't think members are under any illusions of the fact that we are going to face some very, very acute uh, financial challenges, certainly over the next two years. So, in anticipation of that, the, the first thing we've done, as we did with the 2011 years one and two, and then the years three and four, the previous spending of you was to start with our, our managerial structures. Uh, secondly, the, the, what the review was seeking to achieve is, if you like, the minimum numbers of officers necessary to meet the requirements, firstly of the National the Incident Command System, because we, we provide the, and I'm talking here about the operational officers, where there is a, uh, a duty voter which is required for the uh, Strategic and Tactical Command, which is, uh, uh, if you like, an operational requirement to, to manage incidents, whether they be single or multi-agency, and where possible to ensure that the duty systems that our officers undertake are great with compliance, so it's going to move them into uh, if you like, the national scheme and conditions of service, the, uh, the great book. Bring your attention to, uh, you've got paragraph 6 through 12, which give you the, uh, the detail around the, uh, the, the management review. <coughs> in summary, what we're seeking to do in the first instance is to take out six posts. And, and uh, that, that's not inclusive of the Deputy Chief Executive post, which is uh, the post currently filled by Kieran. Kieran also, uh, as in addition to being the Treasurer, so the Section 151 Officer for Finance, Kieran also has a number of corporate roles. And in order to deliver the full saving from the deletion of Kieran's post, because he's asked for policy sentence, which I've approved, what we're going to do there is if we redesignate the Deputy Treasurer, which is Ian Cummins, currently into the Treasurer role, by taking Kieran's post out completely then, subsuming the, his, his responsibilities around the state, ICT and legal, sharing that between Phil and I, and the, the clerk to the authority, the monitoring officer, is already the director of legal and democratic services. That allows us to make the full save from taking that role out. So that's, that's what we'll do. That's explained in, uh, in paragraph six. Paragraph seven then through, uh, through nine, that, that talks about how we're gonna reduce the managerial roles. So that covers the, uh, the strategic and tactical levels. The key point, I think, to, to note, members, is paragraph 10. The implementation of the structure that I'm proposing is going to move us from a, or the existing geographic delivery model, which means you have district managers in each of the five districts, to a functional model. It's that which allows us to reduce the number of officers. It's the only way you can do it, really, in there and still maintain a credible delivery model. That is going to create some representation, uh, some issues for us on the districts around representation, which the deputy chief is uh, as, as addressed through his input into the, uh, the restructure. Paragraphs eleven and twelve are important. That I, I just need to speak in a little bit of detail around that. I just quote verbatim if I can from the from paragraph eleven. As a consequence of the, the move from geographic to functional, it is highly likely that we're not going to be able to resource all of the current partnership meetings and forums that we support uh, at the time. <coughs> okay. We will be, certainly cover the, uh, the key meetings, but there is a reality here, and I go on to explain, this is a direct consequence to the cuts to the authority budget. Can't dress this up any other way. You've heard the language that he use around the mergers as an example. They are the least worst option. There are no options we can deliver that are going to improve service. I need to make that point. When you are caught in the way we have been, and as relentlessly as our budget's been cut, you cannot improve the service. I'm not going to try and suggest for one second you can. The same, therefore, applies when you take out your managerial capacity. That's, that, that, that is a reality. That's not something that's unique to us, however, and other colleagues, police, local authorities, they all face the same challenges, and in truth are looking to do broadly similar things to that which we're suggesting. <coughs> what we will do is prioritise the partnerships that deliver the most significant contributions to our mission. Okay? Safe, effective firefighters, safer, stronger communities. What we will also do 
is end up at the best use of our super busy managers and our non uniform managers. So we should utilise those roles more as, or as effectively as we can do across the partnerships. We will undertake a further review of super busy uh, manager roles in addition to this review, which is focused on strategic and tactical level. But that's something that we will do after the 8th of July when we understand the overall quantum of the scale of the cuts for 15, 16, and then we can refine that down in what will probably be December before we know the, uh, the, the extent of the set month of Merseyside in the autumn statement. Paragraph 18 on page 125 details the savings which will deliver from the implementation of the new structure, which will be in the order that it should be just slightly in excess of half a million. So it makes a contribution already to the savings that we know that we're going to have to make. Uh, I think it is worth drawing your attention again to paragraphs 19 and 20 on pages 125 and 126. And again, I'll put the bait out of them. Uh, members should note that dealing with austerity significantly increases workload. <coughs> that is absolutely for certain. You're going to see a good example of that on the 30th when you consider the outcomes of the public consultation for the West Will. The reports are huge. It, refle it reflects the, the significant workload that such uh, uh, trying to implement such proposals generates. Move on to say the delivery of structural changes approved by the authority thus far has been very resource intensive, that members is an understatement, as uh, you, you well cited on that, you know that. Uh, we still have to progress the proposed St. Helens merger, that will be brought to you to consider on the 30th of June, along with make the decision in relation to West Wivel, and that's in addition to the Nosley merger, which you've already approved, and the outright closure of the <coughs> The inevitable additional cuts to the authorities' budget arising from the next spending review will only serve to exacerbate the situation. That is for sure. Paragraph 20, I go on to say that in addition to the day-to-day -day running of the service, which in itself is, uh, is dynamic. Further reductions in the number of managers self-evidently reduces managerial capacity and increases the workload for those managers who remain within the service. There is a limit to that which can be reasonably delivered. Therefore, our expectations do need to be realistic in, uh, in, in that regard. The integrated risk management plan and the same <coughs> delivery plan for 16, 17 and beyond will reflect that. It goes back to examples that, that we may not be able to resource, for example, all of the partnership meetings that we currently do. The structure there that I'm proposing assumes the continuation of grey group compliant duty systems, which is something that our, uh, our middle management cohorts have said is important to them, and that's something that we've uh, established through dialogue with the representative bodies. I'll, uh, I'll pause at that point, members, and uh, take any questions. If you want to Thanks, Thanks. Right. Any questions or comments on that? I mean, yes, clearly, I, I will support the recommendation, recommendations of the chief as outlined. But could I just ask a question um, in relation to the resourcing of some of the partnerships in, in the community there? Um, clearly, just wondering, I mean, <coughs> whilst members are obviously not the professional arm of the service, but is there a possibility that perhaps members could take up some of those roles on those partnerships just so that the fire service does have a presence there because I know, you know, as we do in all of the districts that we fought, you know, long and hard and over a number of years really for the fire service to be recognised on a number of these partnerships as an equal member really as, as members of the police service where we've always been seen as a bit of an add-on in the past and a bit of, you know, the Cinderella of the, of the Blue Light organisations really. And as I said, I'm just wondering, I mean, I know I'd be willing to help um, to, you know, pitch in with that, I'm sure other members would, obviously I can't speak for them, but just to ensure that at least, you know, we had um, a presence there, we could obviously then feed back, <coughs> excuse me, to, um, to our professional officers, if that was a possibility or not. Uh, uh, just in response to Councillor Rani's uh, very helpful comments, what I would say is m my view as members are making <coughs> an outstanding contribution across all the five districts and as officers, we are, uh, you know, we are, we are eternally grateful to you for that and, and that's, that, that is a reality that you make a huge, 
a huge contribution. Certainly in terms of uh, any additional support members are willing to give, then absolutely we would, uh, we, we would welcome that. And that's something that we would certainly look to, uh, to pursue with you um, following on from, uh, from, from this meeting and approval of this report. To the, to the comments earlier on the transitional arrangement because certainly it's going to be quite difficult for us to move from a district delivery to a functional delivery and have a meeting uh, post the authority meeting where I'm discussing with the district managers how we are best able to facilitate that uh, and we'll be contacting all of the, the local authority uh, leads for community safety but also chief executives and public health to explain the kind of circumstances and the situation and so they are assured that we will maintain our footprint within the district and deliver to the best of our abilities given the kind of the caveats that the chief has described uh, up until this point and i also you know envisage certainly utilizing the ambassadorial roles uh, more effectively or certainly not more effectively since the introduction of our children and young people and health and well-being and there are potential opportunities for members to be involved in, in some community safety partnership particularly around the, the merseyside wide uh, footprint which we would we would welcome. I could see that integrating well into the, the systems that are already established there. So I'm happy to take that um, and build that into some of the kind of thinking about how we meet the partnership needs. Uh, but be reassured, you know, whilst we are moving to function and functional delivery, it is my intention that we would maintain you know, district contact visibility and, and reassure that the district that they've got a go-to person for each one of those areas, uh, which we will continue to deliver against all of those areas safer, you know, safer, stronger communities and also into the health and well-being arena <coughs> uh, as we've discussed in, in great detail of recent times. Just a comment, yeah, I think, um, first of all, as, as you know, we're going to be actually resource start now um, for, for at least a number of years. My, my concern is that we, I know we're going to be able to make good inroads with partnerships as, as, as you've shown over the years. So is it possible to, to be produced for the next meeting those priorities which you believe would be the ones we should, we should be going for? Because quite clearly from the role I've now got it is to look at not just working in partnership but to get resources um, from the organisations. Um, so if, if it is possible that you could get what you consider to be the priority list um, going forward and you know, we might need a discussion about it but from our own our own standpoint, we might be able to uh, look at the different areas. And, and by implication, from what Councillor Rennie says, if we were to send a letter, does that make the other two blue lights say the show these sisters? Uh, I just want to. <laughs> don't, don't I just come back. You shall go to the board. Vice